Hello folks, this is Sula speaking, and you're listening to another commentary video for League of Legends, this one featuring Annie. This is taken from a normal game, so this is a standard game of League of Legends, 5v5. I'm playing in a pre-made team, along with Donsky, who's playing as Ash, along with Serun, who's playing as Ramus, along with Cole, who's playing as Sona, and along with Muki, who's playing as Ryze. So this is some of our standard group that gets together and plays normal games. So you can see we're matched up, another t a team that also has a Ryze player. So again, this is normal, not a ranked game, but it is a pre-made team of five. So we're up against a Ryze player, a Shaco player, Mordekaiser, Gangplank, and Renekton. And notice one thing that was a bit interesting about this game, right off the bat we saw that there was a smite on both Shaco and Gangplank, so we were curious if they were doing some kind of really strange double jungle or some kind of counter jungling play, but as it turns out, no, they weren't doing something like that, they were actually just had a Gangplank who wanted to lane with smite. You really shouldn't do that, smite is not a good laning skill, but... Uh, that is what they were decided to do for this game, but uh, just for any of you watching, I don't recommend doing that. If you're gonna, you can actually play with two smites. You can do a double jungle, in which case one person farms your jungle and one person farms the enemy team's jungle. You can do that. I don't think it's the best strategy, but you can do that. And double smite does open up some interesting things in terms of dragon and baron control. But anyway, they weren't doing that in this game. They were laning with smite, and if you're going to be in a lane, smite's not the skill that you want when you're playing. Okay. Anyway, so getting back to this game, looking at the matchup. I haven't done a normal 5v5 game in a little bit, so I wanted to show one of those games, not just everything custom matched up. I did want to show you one of my normal 5v5 games. Annie is one of my most played champs. I've probably played Annie and Karthus the most out of all the champs that I have. So I want to do this game, want to show you a, a pretty well played Annie game. At least I think so. Well, you can be the judge of that as we go through and see. Wanted to talk about some different things. I want to show you my current Annie build. I know I've had different ones over time as the metagame has changed. That is, League of Legends is always changing as new patches come out. The game doesn't stay the same. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So if you go back and watch some of my older videos, they might be entertaining, but do keep in mind that the game changes and not everything is always the same. So instead of starting with a Doran's Ring, like I used to start with Annie, now because you can't buy a potion along with the Doran's items, I tend to start with this Sapphire Crystal, just because I want to build it into a Catalyst. Catalyst is, I found, is a very good item on Annie. I don't take extra mana regen on Annie. That's because she is, doesn't use up that much mana. She's pretty mana friendly in terms of champions. You don't need to build a whole ton of mana regen on Annie. That's because of the way her Q skill works, her Disintegrate. When she, it, whenever you kill a minion with Disintegrate, which is what you're going to be using it for most of the time in the laning phase, it does refund the mana cost, so you can see here. So that's why I do that. That's why I'm not, you don't see me building, starting with like a Mechie Pendant and building that into Tier of the Goddess. Annie, pretty mana friendly, so I prefer the Catalyst opening into Death Gap, and that's what I'll be showing you here in this game. Anyway, so in terms of the enemy team, we were expecting that their two solos would be Ryze and Gangplank, or Ryze and Renekton, or Gangplank and Renekton, just because that seemed to make the most sense. But as it turns out, they would actually do something a little bit differently with their champions. We knew that Shaco would be jungling, and then see, there he is over at his blue. We decided not to go and try to invade his jungle. Um, see, there's all his, his jack-in-the-boxes to use it that is, are going to take down blue really fast. Uh, we decided not to do that. We thought their level 1 fight was a little bit stronger, so we didn't try to invade. And as far as what they decided to do, they put Gangplank in mid, so Gangplank against Ash. That is a matchup that Ash, you would think, should be able to win because of Ash's range, so that's what we were expecting. But then look up here, they decided to put Mordekaiser in the top lane, and so Mordekaiser is going to be their other solo. Then they're going to have the unorthodox Renekton Rise bottom lane, which is a little strange because normally you'd think that Rise at least would want a solo lane. Renekton can either solo or duo, it doesn't really make that big of a difference, but normally Rise you want in a solo lane. So what that means is that I am going to be up here against this Mordekaiser player. And that is the main reason why I wanted to do this game. The, that rationale being, this is a very, very bad matchup for Annie. I've played this a number of times before, and this is not not a good setup if you are the one playing Annie. Mordekaiser basically just wins this matchup pretty much hands down. So what you're going to see in this game is me trying to deal with that. All right, so why is it so difficult for Annie to deal with Mordekaiser? Well, it all has to deal with his shield. Annie, of course, is a mage champion. She relies on doing magic damage. She builds ability power. And I'm going to click here on Mordekaiser. Notice how his shield builds up. Like right now, if he maxes, as he nukes the creep wave, he's going to build up shield. And he's going to get as much as 150 shield from 
from uh, hitting the creeps. Now notice, if I hit him with my Disintegrate, and then I hit him with my Incinerate, notice this does 130, and then this does 85. Even if I hit him with both of my skills, both of my nukes, then I will barely even break through that shield, and I won't do any actual damage to Mord himself. And then he'll just heal it right back with his Regrowth Pendant. So, I mean, he'll just be able to heal back any damage I do pretty much instantly. Meanwhile, he'll just keep nuking the Creep Wave over and over again. Basically, he uses his skills to farm for him. He doesn't really have to worry about last hitting at all. Like, all he has to do is just keep using that Mace, or whatever it's called, and he'll build up Shield, and he'll push the Wave. This is why Mordekaiser is a very popular champ, and you see him a lot at sort of the lower skill levels. You never really see Mordekaiser in the really high-level streams. Um, he's considered to be a pretty weak champion. It's because his gameplay is all based around his laning, and building up that shield. If you can catch him away from a minion wave, he's actually very weak, where he can't build up that shield. Without his shield, he's very weak, and he doesn't really add that much to a team fight. But here in the laning phase, he is just able to beat the living daylights out of me. He is way stronger than me. I can't harass him at all. And if I even try to harass him, I'm almost wasting my time. So really, all I can do is play defensively, try to last hit the minions as best as possible, and because I'm being pushed back to the tower, I'm losing a lot of them. Anyway, down in bottom lane, their Rise did get first blood on Mookie, so there it is. I'm going to try to focus on my lane a little bit, in part because the health bars are really buggy. Like right now, see how there's no health bar for Donsky, it's a little weird. But also because I really want to focus on this matchup and, and talk about sort of if you play Annie and you get stuck in one of these terrible matchups, how you can sort of counter playing against a Mordekaiser. Uh, Mord, I see Mord played uh, quite a bit out there, so if you find this yourself in this situation, different things you can do. I mean, the first thing is just you really can't get too aggressive on Mord in the early game. If we try to harass back and forth, there's no possible way that I can beat him playing as Annie. His shield is way too strong in the, in the laning phase. He'll keep nuking the creeps, he'll keep building up shield. He can regenerate his shield much, much faster than I can do damage to him. So all I'm really trying to do is just play defensively, try to farm as best I can, try to get as many last hits as I can. Now you can see he's beating me in lane. He's got 30 minion kills. I only have 22 because I have to last hit at the tower and that's a a lot harder than playing as Mordekaiser where your skills just basically farm for him. Like, watch what he's going to do here. He's just going to nuke this wave right there. He's going to nuke, nuke each of these down and then last hit. And notice how easy it is just to last hit. And he's got full shield too. So really easy for Mordekaiser to farm. Another reason why he's so popular. He's a very easy champion to play. His skills don't use mana. They're all based on cooldowns. So easy champion to play. But as I said, once he gets outside that laning phase, he's really not that strong. So if you can if you can win a laning phase against a Mordekaiser, you can definitely beat him. So as I've said, I mean, you can see I'm losing. I'm just trying to lose not that badly, basically. That's the idea here. The one weakness, though, of Mordekaiser is in order for him to build up shields, he has to, in order for him to build up his shield, he does have to nuke the creep wave. That is, he has to push this lane forward. Um, he can't, he can't like sit back and zone me or deny me. It's or it's very difficult for him to do that. He has to keep pushing the wave over and over again. Uh, for those of you who might remember how Renekton was a little while ago, right before he got nerfed, it was the same deal with Renekton. I mean, he could heal himself pretty much indefinitely with Cole the Meek. Like, like he could heal himself endlessly and pretty much never die in lane. But the trade-off was he did have to push the lane for that. That is, um, in order to heal himself with Cole the Meek, he'd have to be nuking the creep wave so he couldn't really zone you or deny you. And Mordecai's is the same way. So notice he's been pushed up here the entire game. Like he's been pushed up right here by my tower the whole game. So in order to beat him, I can't beat him one-on-one. -on -one. What I need is I need help from my teammates. So I need our jungler, Seyrun, to come up here and help me. Because because Mord is so pushed forward, it's going to make him very susceptible to this, to gank. So Seyrun's going to charge up his powerball. Here we go. I'm going to stun with Tibbers. There we go. Uh, disintegrate, incinerate. There's the ignite. He's going to use his ultimate on me, but we're going to take him down. And with my molten shield on, going to give me a little extra magic resist, and I'm going to have just enough life. So I'm going to survive this Children of the Grave. I'm still going to make it out with 100 health left, uh, drinking my health potion there as it went down. So notice how effective that was. We combined really effectively to get that kill. Sirun came in, powerballed, got the stun, got the ton off, taunt off. I was able to use my ult, uh, use the summon tibbers, get off my disintegrate, incinerate, use my ignite, which I brought as well, and we were able to get that kill. And so what that has done is it's helped put me back in this matchup. I mean, as you can see, I was losing the lane. I'm still losing this lane. You can see he's ahead 42 to 33. There's not that much I can do about that. He's going to get more minion kills than me because I have to farm at the tower endlessly. But by getting that kill, it really helps put me back in this. So I was able to turn my Sapphire Crystal into a Catalyst. I was also able to pick up Boots. I picked up a Sight Ward and three Health Bots. And notice that I spent all my gold. I went, I spent all, I, I think I had like 
three gold left after I left base. So that's what you want to do. You want to put that gold to use. You want to use it. Anyway, here in mid, you can see Donsky's getting ganked by their Rise and their Shaco player. And unfortunately, he's not going to make it out. Uh, Donsky probably should have headed this way by circling back to the tower. Made it a little easy for them to kill him. So anyway, right there, Mordekaiser's going to throw down a ward. So a good Mordekaiser play doing what he should do. Putting down a Sight Ward to protect himself so that he'll, he won't be as vulnerable to that to that same play that we just made. Serum coming in and ganking him. But again, look at this. He's got he's built up his shield again. So what that means is I have to last hit at the tower. So here we go. I got to be very careful here. You want to get all the minions you can. Didn't do a good job there, but I am going to get these two. No, I thought I got that one. Can I house hit that one? Yep. And then I'll use Disintegrate. Nope. So I couldn't get that. So you can see I'm missing minion kills. He's 13 ahead right now. On his trip back to base, he picked up boots, picked up boots, a, health, a ruby crystal, and well, he already had the regrowth pendant. So um, he had a pretty good buy as well. I, I think he didn't, but I don't think he spent all his gold. He should have had a little more gold than that. So I guess he's saving up for something. But again, over and over again, you can see we're doing this dance. He's going to nuke the creep wave. I'm going to push the tower. And now my goal is I need to try to last hit these minions. So there we go. Auto attack, wow, disintegrate bolt. And now I really want to get this cannon minion, but don't get it. And I am going to get that last one. So I get most of them. Um, if you're going to play this way, you really do have to be able to farm at the tower. Anyway, there is a fight going on down here in bottom lane. Can't see too much of what's happening because the health bars are bugged. But Serun is going to get clean up that kill on... Um, on there, a Shaco player, and then Mookie's going to flash to get a kill on their Renekton, so very nicely done. Well done there. Donsky was coming down to help, but couldn't quite make it in time. Anyway, up here, I'm still farming, as I said before. Being able to last hit at, at the tower, very important. And can I get this one? Yep. So, like, right there, that's all three minion kills. And if I couldn't farm at the tower, then I would be really far behind this mord. Like, I'm still losing. But I'm not losing as badly as I might be uh, because I'm getting most of these at the tower. Again, I can't really engage. Like, what can I do? If I go in, even if I pop all my skills, I'm just barely, I'm not even going to break through his shield. So, again, I'm just waiting and waiting and biding my time trying to look for an opportunity later on where we'll be able to turn this around. There's the, there's the incinerate there. And I'm going to get all but two of those minions, I think. So, as I said, if you've got one of these unfavorable matchups, you want to be careful. You want to pick your pick your spots, wait in time, like there, so like right there, I just nuked him with with my Disintegrate, and it didn't even break through his shield, so, um, as I've said before, really bad laning matchup for Annie, uh, Annie doesn't win this laning matchup, right there, I was trying to hit him with Incinerate, I actually missed, I hit the Creep Wave, which is bad, because if you notice here, it's going to make it tougher to farm this minion wave, so like, notice that the tower now kills the caster minions, instead of just doing damage to them, but at least I am going to get the melee minions, I'm going to get that cannon minion. So if you look at the scoreboard, he's been pretty consistently about 15 minion kills ahead of me for a while now. You can see he nukes the creep wave every time, just nukes it down with his skills, builds up his shield, and then I have to farm at the tower. Just notice how much more difficult it is for me to farm than it is for him than it is for Mordekaiser to farm. Again, it's just the difference of uh, Mordekaiser's skills kind of doing most of the work for him. Uh, so again, if you're gonna if you have one of these matchups, you really do need to be able to last hit as they push your tower. All right, anyway, elsewhere on the map, there is some fighting going on. You can see there was another gank in mid that took down Donsky. This is sort of the biggest issue for our team right now. We're, we're losing top despite that gank. You can see I'm still behind Mordekaiser. I'm quite a few, I'm what, 20 minion kills down. We're losing mid because Donsky has 40 minion kills and this gangplank has 58. So Donsky is losing mid. He's died twice. Uh, their, their Shaco player has been very active in ganking Donsky in that middle lane. So we're losing our solo lanes. We're doing well in bottom, but we're losing our solos, and that's a problem. So what we're going to do is I was asking Serun if he could come up here and we could try to gank this again because uh, I need to do something to turn this lane around. I can't beat Mordekaiser one-on-one. -on -one. I need help from my teammates. So we're going to go in here. You can see here comes Serun. He charged up his powerball ahead of time. There he goes. I'm going to flash to make sure I can get there. There's the stun. There's Disintegrate, Incinerate. There's the Ignite. And once again, we're going to pull this off perfectly. So kudos to Serun. Serun's going to get the kill so that's going to allow us to turn this matchup around and that is going to help me out enormously because now i'm going to be able to farm up this minion wave and i'll be able to push my minions up to the tower where the tower will eat them and mord won't get the gold won't get the experience for them anyway their shako also has to come over here to hold the lane so that's going to allow serun to go and farm in their jungle so it's going to open up that play for us as well now right here 
I was, I was, uh, I had sick, tic, uh, I had sick uh, Tibbers on this Shaco player here, just to make it as uncomfortable for him as possible. And of course, Tibbers is going to get taken down at the tower, but you can see he did some damage to that Shaco. He's going to have to go heal, presume probably after this. So again, while that's going on, it allowed a rune to go in, steal a little bit of his jungle stuff, just slow him down a little bit. And again, here, like, look, I'm getting in some harass. I'm not going to kill him here, but I want the tower to eat all my minions before Mordekaiser gets back to the lane. See, like, Mord will be back any second now, but he missed two full waves of creeps and that is a lot i mean he missed all the experience in the gold now look i'm almost caught up to him in minions 87 to 79 so i've almost caught up to him anyway so he'll go back to nuking the wave you can see shako's hanging around here on this trip back i picked up a blasting wand i don't think that was actually the right purchase i was really close to a needlessly large rod i think i should have sold my sight ward was, I think I should have sold the Sight Ward and picked up Needlessly Large Rod. That extra ability power would have helped out quite a bit. Anyway, there is an engage going on down here in bottom lane. You can see Cole and Mookie are going out, and here comes Seirun again. Another perfect gank going to come in and clean up the kill on that Renekton. Now this Rise is in deep trouble too. They're going to go after this Rise. Are they going to be able to pick off? Are they going to be able to pick off this Rise? There's the Flash. Don't know how much health we actually have, but there's the Flash. Seirun going to flash in, use his Tremors to get the kill. Now Gangplank coming down from mid, and Cole and Mookie together are going to pick him off. Oh, now so, now Shake coming in as well so again don't know how much health our team has have to think they're low Donsky a little slow getting over here from middle lane probably should have come over a little bit sooner um, there's the arrow doesn't look like it's gonna hit though so anyway that it was still a really nice play we went three for zero in bottom lane there and um, that helped us out quite a bit Anyway, over here, I'm going to go in and engage. Notice I was engaging with Mord before he got his shield up. That was my goal there. Go in and engage before his shield came up. And look how close I get to killing him. If I had my Ignite off of cooldown, I think I probably would have killed him here. Because he went all the way down to 200 life. And my Ignite does more damage than that. So, not quite able to kill him. Notice how I still have Tibbers chasing. I thought that was pretty funny. But, so even though I'm not able to kill him there, I was able to get in a lot of damage. I'm going to force Mord to go back. going to force him to go back and buy... And that, you know, that round of Frass came off pretty well, uh, pretty well, I think, because I was able to stop him from farming those minions, and now Seirun's going to push my minion wave to tower, and so he won't be able to farm those again, so he's going to miss out on that once again. Anyway, in mid, though, Mookie going back and forth with this Gangplank player. Um, not sure, again, I don't know how much life Mookie actually has here. The replay, still a little bit weird due to the, still a little bit weird. Um, when you're looking at places where the player's screen wasn't. But anyway, this was the goal. Get the minions up to the tower. Notice how the tower is going to eat that cannon minion. Uh, looks like he will get experience with a cannon minion, though. That's a shame. Wish that the tower had eaten that a little bit sooner. Anyway, in comes Seirun, powerballing in here after this, um, after this uh, Gangplank player. There's the taunt. And don't think we're going to be able to get that kill, though. And that was a really, really wacky <laughs> in, as far as the replay was concerned. All right, anyway, I have turned my rot Blessing Line into a Rod of Ages. I've gotten it at the 15 minute mark, so it will definitely charge up and get the full duration. I still think Rod of Ages is a good item on Annie. Uh, it g gives her a little bit extra survivability. Um, as I said, she doesn't really need the mana regen, so you can just build straight, build the extra straight health and ability power. Anyway, right here, again, I'm going to get in on a stun, just going to get in a little harass with, now that I have some ability power, I've gotten to the point where I can start to get through his shield a little bit more. This, the shield will not scale, the shield does scale by level, but it doesn't scale up as fast as a lot of other stuff in the game. So, like, right at the start of the game, that shield is super powerful, but as the game goes on, it gets weaker and weaker. And, like, right now, I'm going to go in and engage again. Notice that the shield is down, so I can get in some actual harass on this Mord player. And so, once again, notice I've gotten about maybe 30 to 40% of his health down, to, just due to harassing him when his shield is down. Earlier in the game, I wasn't strong enough to pick a fight with this Mordekaiser, but now I'm at a point where I really can. And so, like, there we go again. I'm going to go in. I'm going to engage. I'm going to flash after him. There's the Ignite. Uh, again, I'm getting really close. Uh, he's going to... He, he is going to ghost away, and he's going to get away on one hit. So that was disappointing for me. If I had picked up that needlessly large rod earlier, I think I would have had enough damage to get him. So a little bit short there. That was disappointing, but... Once again, I've harassed him out of lane, and watch this, Mookie's going to come over, and he's going to catch him when he's recalling back to base, and bam, there we go. There's the Rise Overload, so that's going to allow us to take down Mordekaiser. 
Now, unfortunately, because Mookie was up there, that does mean that we're running into trouble here in bottom lanes. You can see Cole was just killed, and now Dante is getting engaged on by, what, four members of the enemy team? Or three members of the team. Shaco has his clone here. So, that's not going too well. Uh, Donsky, I can't see his health bar, but I think he's very low based on how they're acting. And Gangplank gonna ghost in there, and the parlay is gonna finish him off. So, not fully, I mean, it didn't work out perfectly because we did run into some trouble in bottom lane. We actually suffered two deaths bottom lane, and that part of that was due to Mookie running way up here. But at the same time, I mean, in top, we got another kill on that Mordekaiser player, and I am getting to the point, if in terms of farm, I'm dead even with him again, and so that means advantage for me. Um, that gives me the advantage. So uh, I didn't buy anything on that trip back to base, just some health potions. Now, because my lane is pushed up here by this tower, I don't want to go up there and farm. It's very unsafe. I mean, their, their Shaco com could come out here and engage. So I'm going to take this time. I'm going to go and pick up the blue buff here, pick up this Golem buff. We're at the point of the game where Seirun's Ramus doesn't really need it that much. He can jungle just fine without blue buff uh, now that we've reached the sort of the midpoint of the game. So I'm going to take this for myself. And with infinite mana and the cooldown reduction, I'm going to be able to play very aggressively on this Mordekaiser, just as long as I know where their other champs are. So like right now I can see two mid, I can see Shaco's over here doing dragon. So that means I can I can play very aggressively here because the only person who could come after me would be Gangplank. And although that would be bad, uh, I have to imagine that he wouldn't actually... He's probably not going to come down here. Anyway, we had a word at Dragon, so we're going to counter gank this play for Dragon. We're going to kill that Shaco player, and we're going to take Dragon. So that's a huge win for our team. Uh, we're going to kill, pick off their jungler and take Dragon ourselves. So that's big. Uh, again, I can know where the enemy champs are. I can see where they all are. So that's going to allow me to play very aggressively on this Mordekaiser. And you're going to see that. Uh, I'm going to try to go in and engage on him whenever his shield is down. So, like, right there, I need to farm these minions. There we go. Going to use Incinerate, Disintegrate. Incinerate's already off, Disintegrate's already off cooldown. Now, Incinerate comes off cooldown, and there we go. Going to get them. All right, so once again, going to go after this Mordekaiser. Like, notice his shield is down, so there we go. Going to go in and get in my harass while the shield is down. There we go again, and I've managed to burst down, burst, uh, get in a little bit more damage while his shield is down. If I can get him down to about half, I should be able to burst him down and actually go for the kill. So, like, right here, there we go. Now my stun's back up. And looks like I'm not going to go for it here. I'm going to wait for another wave. But you can see, doing pretty good damage here. And in terms of the farming, we're more or less going dead even now. The fact that I have this blue puts my skills on a short cooldown and helps me out a lot here. Anyway, don't have my stun queued up yet, but again, here we go. Going to disintegrate, incinerate, again, with his shield down. Um, so that's the goal there. Anytime his shield is down, I'm going to try to hit him with my skills. And he's going to back off here. So now is where we get to the tough part, guys. So if you're an Annie player, this is where the this is where part of the real skill comes in. Notice how I'm ready to go with my stun. All I have to do is pop my molten shield, and then my stun will be up. So I am going to last hit with Annie auto attack and zone him away, just using the threat of my stun. So this is not easy. Oh, there we go. Now he's going to come in and engage. So there we go. There's the disintegrate, incinerate. There's the ignite. He's really low. There's the stun. Um, oh, he's on one hit, and here's where I make my big mistake. I don't flash after him. Notice my flash. Was up all i had to do was flash disintegrate and that would have been a kill but i didn't see the play at the time and i could have killed him right there and it would have been so so sweet it would have been such a sick play but i missed it and i really felt bad about that when i went and watched this replay anyway though we are having a team fight here in bottom you can see mookie just got a kill on that renekton player sirun mookie engaging on this shaco player and there we go mookie gonna slip in there and finish off that rise i think he didn't realize they were in the brush here so we're gonna score two more kills in bottom lane uh, or three more kills. Looks like we killed Gangplank earlier. So that went really well, and I pushed down top. And can you believe it? I actually get down my tower in top lane before Mordekaiser did. So you can see, 141 to 125. It's been a really tough lane, but I've actually come out ahead. And I'd like to say that was all due to just me. I do think I played it very well. But a large part of that was due to the fact that uh, that Seirun was able to come up and gank for me so many times. Anyway, in mid here, you can see we're going after going after this Gangplank. You can see he's chasing down Donsky. Is he going to manage to get him? No, not going to manage to get him there. So we're not going to get, not going to finish him off. Uh, Donsky is going to be able to make his escape there. So well done there. And now Cole and Seirun have come in to cover the lane. Anyway, I'm heading back to top once again. You can see Mord, again, in order to build up shield, he does have to push. And look how many tower shots he can tank due to that shield. So he's able to tank a lot of tower shots. Anyway, my stun is up. So I'm going to come in here. There's the stun to burst off his shield. There's a little bit more 
more harassment. Um, again, whenever his shield down, whenever his shield is down, I'm going to try to engage there. But my blue buff has worn off, so I can't be quite as crazy about using mana as I was there a minute ago. Uh, it's not infinite when I don't have the blue buff. So anyway, just going to farm up these minions here. And if you notice, I was trying to preserve my stun there. That's why I wasn't using it. Anyway, Gangplank getting caught out behind the rest of the team here. He's going to go in with Cole. Uh, Donsky needs to come down here. Can he engage? Let's see. Uh, there's the slow. There's the stun. And there we go. Going to get that kill. Uh, again, don't know how low everybody was. I have to think Cole was actually pretty low here. Not 100% sure. But I have to imagine he was really low. Now Shaco coming in here. Um, and looks like he was trying to go in there on Cole, but not able to. Meanwhile, up here, I'm doing the same thing as before. I'm one away from my stun, so I'm going to use any auto attack to try to last hit, like just like that. Again, zoning back Mordekaiser. If he wants to come forward and engage with me, if he wants to get farm, he's going to have to deal with my stun. So, as I've said, this is sort of a more advanced anti tactic. You want to be able to last hit with auto attack while you're holding your stun. Um, but anyway, Mordekaiser's down here now, and as soon as I realize that, I'm going to start using my skills again. So, notice how I did that? Not a coincidence that's why I did that anyway here they're ganking Donsky in mid Mordekaiser and this this Shaco player there's the ult from Mordekaiser he's gonna get off his children of the grave or whatever it's called and there it goes meanwhile I'm coming in to try to counter gank this but I don't have my stun up and that's a little bit problematic so you can see I'm gonna go in I'm gonna use my skills but I don't have stun up anyway now Cole is coming in to counter gank this but here comes their gangplank as well he's gonna ult on there I'm gonna try to flash away but unfortunately not gonna make it out Meanwhile, we are going to be able to get some more kills here. You can see Sarun is coming in, taunting them. Um, not going to be able to get that Shaco play. Or we did get the Shaco play, but we're not going to be able to get Gangplank. He's going to slip away. And so we actually ended up going two for three there. So not great. Sirun trying to powerball after him, but Gangplank going to get away. And notice what he's doing here. He's actually like doing the doing the taunt, uh, spamming the taunt there, doing the Gangplank laugh. So I'm not really sure why he was doing that. But sort of, as I said, sort of spamming the Gangplank taunt. Um, so a little bit, little bit poor manners there, I guess. But oh well. Anyway, now, look once again, right here, he's doing the laugh, doing the taunt, and watch what's going to happen to this gangplank right here uh, after spamming all the, after spamming all the uh, joke taunt things here in mid. So right here, Donsky is just waiting for his moment, and there we go. There's the taunt from Sirun, and oh, here comes the arrow! Bam! Taunt that gangplank, and down he goes. So very nicely done, very nice combo play, and I think well deserved on a Gangplank who's spamming slash taunt in mid. All right, anyway, in terms of itemizing, I actually don't really like some of what I did in this game. Again, I think I should have picked up the needlessly large rod sooner. You can see I still don't have it, and that's holding back how much ability power that they have. But I have picked up Sorcerer's Shoes for the extra magic penetration. I looked at their team, and they didn't really have that much crowd control. I mean, they have Rise Rune Prison, they have Renekton Stun, but that's really about it. I mean, Shaco has a slow, but like Gangplank doesn't have any real crowd control, aside from his ultimate. Mordekaiser doesn't have any crowd control. Um, so they didn't really seem like they have that much. So I just figured that I would go with the Sork Shoes this game and in order to try and increase my burst potential. Usually I go with the Merc Treads, but uh, I'm going to go with the Sorcerer's Shoes instead. I've experimented a little bit in the past with cooldown boots on Annie, but I don't really like the cooldown boots that much. I found myself just running out of mana oftentimes when I went with the cooldown boots. So I'm going to go with the Sork Shoes instead. Uh, going to try to increase my burst as a caster. Annie is a burst caster. Uh, it's things that allow her to do more burst generally are pretty good on her. So anyway, coming down here, I believe that there's another dragon up soon, and we were trying to get ready for that. Uh, Mordekaiser is still here in mid. Notice that he now he's starting to build magic resist. He's got the he's got the Mercury treads. Anyway, I'm gonna go engage and go in on him here. He's very tanky, so we're not actually gonna be able to kill him. But notice we were able to get him to burn his ghost. So that was that was a pretty good result there. Uh, unfortunately, Cole getting killed there. So anyway, we were able to burst. We were able to get his ghost down. I didn't have to use my flash or anything. So now um, you can see Mookie in a little bit of trouble here. It looks like we're gonna have a fight mid. There's Sirun gonna powerball in, going after that gangplank. Gangplank's the one we want to taunt. So I'm gonna go after him. There's the stun. Don't have Tibbers up, but I am going to kill him with my Incinerate Bolt, and now we're going to go in on that Mordekaiser, he needs one more hit, and Mookie's going to polish him off there with a whole bunch of other, the rest of us adding adding on a little bit extra damage, and that's a great hawk shot from Donsky, notice how it revealed the Renekton player there, so now we're going to head over here, once again, got my stun queued up, as Annie, you always want to try to have that stun queued up, so we're trying to find this guy, don't know where he is, doesn't look like we're going to be able to find him, but we still did a very good job in that engage, we still definitely came out ahead. 
So anyway, now that the looks like the fighting's over, I can start using my skills again, and I have enough ability power and magic penetration that I can actually kill the caster minions with just one incinerate bolt. Anyway, here you can see Rise trying to defend this, but we do have three here. Most of their team looks like they're healing. I'm not going to be able to kill Rise, but we should be able to get this mid tower. There's the tremors from Sirun's Ramus. Their Rise is going to nuke Sirun, but I mean, let's face it, he's Ramus. He's got his defensive ball curl. He's going to be pretty safe. And look at Sirun's game here: eight zero seven Ramus. So just playing a marvelous jungling game. Mookie here going forward, I, I don't know why, out of position. Um, we can't save him from three enemy champs, and he's just going to get killed. And that was a pretty needless death. Uh, overall, Mookie's playing great. You can see Mookie ha was legendary status, so he actually gives them a ton of gold. But that, that in and of itself was actually not a very good play there. All right, anyway, Sirun is going back to push back top. You can see their Shaco player was pushing it forward. I am heading down bottom. Notice how there's this big wave of minions. I spotted that heading towards the tower, and I figured that I would go push this back, get the extra golden experience. I really need to buy because I have a ton of gold, but I have to go push this back. Uh, we can't let them just take bottom tower for free. So anyway, I do have double buff. I picked the, I had the blue earlier. I got the red when I killed someone. And look who's down here. It's Mordekaiser. And so at the time when I was playing, my thought was something like, well, well, well. Look what we have here. Mordekaiser again. Fancy seeing you here, buddy. So anyway, we fought at the top, we fought at the middle, and now we're fighting at the bottom. In terms of his build, you can see he's building a ton of magic resistance now. Obviously, he got tired of me uh, nuking him so much with Annie. But meanwhile, look at this. Our ward coverage, very good. Our ward at Dragon, we had another ward there that just ran out. Four of them heading for bottom. So that's my cue. I can't farm here. Got to back off. Got to play safe. And indeed, I'm going to be able to just walk back here with, in, in safety. Now, their Gangplank player was going on Donsky, and he is just doing like some insane dive. So we are all just going to team up and kill him here. Uh, way out of position. They are going to take this tower here, though. So, I mean, you could say that Gangplank allowed them to get that tower by having us all run after him, but at the same time, uh, I mean, I don't think I really could have held that tower 1v3 anyway, so they were probably going to get that regardless, but oh well, we did we did score a kill on Gangplank there. Anyway, we were hoping that Serun could chase one of them down here, hoping that he could powerball in and get off a taunt. If he could have trapped one of them, I think I could have burst them down. I do have a lot of burst right now. But not going to be able to do it. And while we're down here, meanwhile, their Shaco player is going to take down this tower here. Uh, the, really, Kolordonsky should have been there. Um, that was a pretty unnecessary tower loss there. Uh, you know, don't want to blame people individually, but they were the ones who should have... They really should have covered that and probably should have seen that coming. But anyway, now we're going after Shaco. We know that he's in this area. Um, you can see he's going after Cole here. He's slowing Cole. And he's just going to straight kill Cole, which was n not a good play. Again, really... That was a pretty needless death on, on Cole's part. Uh, I feel like he really should have been able to get out of that. Anyway, while that was going on, Mookie and I did push down bottom lane, and now we're trying to catch this Shaco. You can see there he is. Sirun's still power blowing after him. Going to continue. There he is. He's going to he's going to uh, deceive over the wall. So we know he's somewhere over here. And there he is. There he is. So there we go. Going to just catch him with Tibbers. Disintegrate, incinerate. Going to burst him down. So I think that was a pretty nice catch there. Just caught him on the back end of Tibbers. I would have been really embarrassed if I had missed on that. <laughs> um, but again, as Annie, if you're going to play as Annie, you got to have your stun queued up at all points in time. Notice how I had the stun ready. I mean, it's just sort of basic to her gameplay. If you're going to be just walking around the map, have her stun ready. So I'm going to head back to buy. But now look at this. Look where M Mookie and Sirun are. This is not a safe place to be. They're trying to farm up here. So, so exposed. Uh, just not a good position. So they're going to get trapped by three members of the enemy team. So this is a two on three. Not a good engagement here. No, it's actually a two on four. So not a good engage here. Uh, they are actually going to kill Rise. So they're going to go one for one here. And now if Sirun can get out, then it'll be an even exchange. But it's not a good fight. It's the wrong part of the map to be on. We're ahead right now. This is how you lose games when you get ahead being in part of the maps where you shouldn't be. So is Sirun going to make it out? Yes, he actually is going to be able to powerball out of there. So kudos for escaping there, Sirun, and turning that into a, into a straight one for one. So again, I mean, it came out okay, but it was the wrong part of the map to be on. Like you, when we don't have vision on the enemy team, this is not a safe place to farm. They counter gank that in, in correct fashion, and we were lucky to turn that into a one for one. So Anyway, not a good play by our team, even though it did work out. Oh, and apparently someone's left one wolf there. I really probably should have killed that, so they'll respawn, but oh well. Anyway, I did have enough money on that trip back to pick up Death Cap, so now I'm in really good shape as far as the game goes. My champion is very strong at this portion of the game. You can see I've hit 18. I'm at 18 at the 30-minute mark, so I've got a leveling advantage on 
well, every champ on their team because none of them are 18. This is about as strong as I'll be at any point in the game. So right now is sort of when we want to pick fights and engage because my champ's not going to get too much stronger. Annie is not a good late game champ. She's really at her strongest in the mid game. So um, this is a good time for us to try to, like, as I said, try to engage, try to pick fights. That's where we're going to go for dragon here. We're going to try to force this dragon engage. Um, you can see there, Shaco is taking down our ward at, at Baron, but we're going to go for this dragon. If they come to challenge us, that's good. We, we wouldn't mind fighting, but apparently they're not aware of it. You can see they have two champs top. top two champs top they're not gonna not gonna engage on this but because they're top that means we can really go for these guys middle uh, and see here we go we're gonna go after that gonna go after that Shaco. we missed him there initially he does have an oracle so we'd really like to kill him there he is there he is S uh, Serum gonna power ball in there there's the taunt i'm gonna flash in tibbers disintegrate and that's an easy kill that Shaco does not have much survivability actually has no defensive items whatsoever so that's pretty key for us because we're gonna pop up we're gonna get that get that oracle off of him anyway right there now we're going to engage here we're going to pick this team fight and we have a four on two i believe uh, were we able to kill that gangplank yes so we are going to kill gangplank Muki go, does go down now so anyway good fights for us to pick though because we saw that members of their team were off in top lane and we were as i said we were able to clear that oracles off of their Shaco player. Here though, we really can't push this on the tower. Three members of their team there, we really can't put this, push this. But notice that because we killed their Shaco player, we killed their jungler, they don't have their smite, we decided that we would at least bait Baron. We we didn't we weren't really strong enough to go for Baron, but we are going to bait this. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna kill their ward and watch this. We were hoping that they would walk over here and we could jump out of the brush. They don't do that, but here they go, they threw down another Baron ward, and once again we're gonna kill it with that vision ward that we have there. So we're going to deny them sight again. Oh, and then watch this. They just throw down another ward here on the other side of Baron. So I'm going to head up here and uh, I'm going to kill that ward too. And then they have another Jack in the box up there too from their, their uh, Shaco player. Um, I didn't kill that one. Oh no, that's Baron. Excuse me. That's not a Jack in the box. I thought that that was, uh, thought that that was another Jack in the box. But then I believe they're going to throw down another Jack in the box. Yeah, right there. So we actually killed three of their wards there just off of one pink ward. So that almost paid for it almost paid for the pink ward in and of itself it definitely did pay for the difference between the red and uh, the pink and the normal ward so anyway they killed our killed our pink ward there i think that they dropped down another pink of their own i don't don't think that their shaco player bought another oracles he might have not sure um no, he didn't buy an oracle, so he must have dropped another pink ward. So anyway, again, we're still looking to fight. We have the advantage. We're up in kills. We have a... Uh, I wouldn't say we have a big edge in farm. It's pretty even in farm. But as I said, I'm in really good shape with Annie right now. I mean, if I can catch people with my stun, they're going to go down. We want to kill their gangplank. He's the one we want to go after. And oh, look at this. We're going to score the pick on the gangplank. Uh, not quite enough to burst him down. But boom, look at that arrow coming in from Donsky. Perfect. So we're going to take him down. Uh, we're going to focus down the, the Shaco clone. That's not the actual Shaco. So... That was really key. Gangplank is the one we wanted to get. Notice his build. He's got he's got Ghost Blade. He has a Phantom Dancer. He has a Zeal. Berserker Greaves. He's doing a ton of damage. He's doing by far the most damage on their team. He's the one we want to kill. So now with him down, we're going to try to force them into a Baron fight. If they come over here, we're going to engage with them. If they try to go for Baron, we are going to hopefully get it. I mean, Serun does have his smite, so let's watch the Baron. Let's watch the hit points. When it gets down to about a 1,000, we're all going to nuke it at once. I'm saving my skills to nuke it. And here we go. Let's nuke the Baron. Are we going to get it? Yes. Yes, we do. So well done. I don't know if they had vision. Oh, look at this. Oh, there's Shaco just blinked in. He just deceived over the wall, and now he can't get back out again because the skills are on cooldown. Oh, no. So we're going to burst him down there. Uh, yeah, not a good blink on his part. He, he either should have come in much earlier or much later. Probably should have come in earlier and tried to smite steal it. So that was a risky play. I mean, let, make no mistake about it. That was not a safe Baron. That was very much a risky play. But we did have our we did have a smite on our side. Serun did have his smite up. That Shaco player might not have had his smite up. So we decided to we decided to go for it. We wanted to force the fight, and we were lucky to be able to take Baron. But again, I don't want to make it sound like that was a safe play because it wasn't. It was a risky play. It was a daring play. But now it's put us very far ahead in this game. Anyway, in terms of my next item, I wanted to get some magic resist, but I didn't really think that Banshee's Veil would be that great for me. I mean, I already have the Rod of Ages, and it's all the way charged up now, so I've already got, what is it, 600 extra health, 700 extra mana. I don't really need another 
another catalyst there. What I needed was magic resist and I wanted to get some more ability power. So I figured I'll pick up Abyssal Scepter. I don't buy it that often, but I think it was the right item in this situation. Took me from 30 to, to 87 magic resist. So that's a huge increase. Gives me a little bit more ability power and it gives me the aura that reduces enemy magic resist. Um, I also checked and nobody else on my team had Abyssal. So I, it would be a unique aura and it would help out the rest of our team. Anyway, we don't want to pick a fight here. I was trying to tell everybody like, you know, like let's not pick a fight here um, because I wanted to push back bottom. I was hoping that we would not engage. We, we almost got trapped in an engage there. So anyway, I'm on my way. I'm coming up here. As soon as I get here, we'll be able to look to fight with these guys. We, if we can engage away from our tower, we're, away from their tower, we're pretty much guaranteed to win. So here we go. We're going to try to circle around here. There's the hawk shot. Um, we are looking to try to catch someone out on their team here. And right here, we're going to catch Rise blue pilling. So Sarun's just going to walk up, pop his Banshee's Veil. There's a perfect Sona ult from Cole into Ash Arrow from Donsky. I'm going to toss down Tibbers, get the stun, engage on that Mordekaiser, and we're going to take him down too. So we just caught the enemy team when they weren't expecting an engage. I don't know why they weren't expecting an engage. They really should have been, but we, we caught them unaware. We are able to come in. We were able to burst down two of their champs. Even with all that magic resist that Mord has, we were still able to get him. Uh, we, we just lined up our stuns perfectly there. Sona stun, Sona, Sona crescendo into ash arrow into an anti area of effect timber stun so i mean really just exactly what we wanted there and so with those two picks that we're going to get we're going to get in hib over here um we were thinking about going for the nexus towers and maybe we could have just straight ended the game there but we decided we'll back off play it a little bit safer we knew that shaco was over here we decided let's go after him we do have an oracles on call so we should be able to see him wherever he is there he is there's the deceive sirun's gonna run into him even though he's invisible and now i'm gonna try to engage on this gangplank here uh try to go after him there's a great taunt coming in is he gonna get away is he gonna get away and sirun's gonna flash after him and get the kill there so nicely done by sirun rest of us are gonna take down this tower so unfortunately Sarun is going to die and he's going to lose his legendary he's going to lose his legendary status. I'm going to burst down that gank or Mookie's going to burst them down. So now we've got the now we're fighting out away from their base. Uh, we're taking them down. This is exactly the fight we've wanted. So three for one, and we can probably win off of this push, but it doesn't matter. They're going to surrender over there. So that's actually going to be the end of the game right there. So I think we would have won off that push anyway. But that is going to be the end of it, and the enemy team is going to surrender there at about a little before the 40 minute mark. All right, so let's finish this up. There you see the results screen, 717. I, I'd have to say I think that was a pretty good Annie game. Haven't played Annie too much lately. I, I haven't put up a recording of her in a while, aside from the tutorial game that I put up on the Button Masters channel. So wanted to do another game with Annie, wanted to show a little bit more of the gameplay. I, I've done many videos with her before, but she is one of my favorite champs. She's very easy to play, guys. If you're looking for an ability power caster, she's very inexpensive to buy with the influence points, with the IP. So I, I, I would I would encourage people who are new to the game to check out Annie because she's, she's easy to play, but at the same same time she can be very effective even even in very high level high skilled games so thought that that was interesting wanted to share this anyway as far as the rest of the team you can see Donsky really struggled in that laning matchup with the gangplank I I feel like he probably should have been able to do a little better in the laning phase uh, I, I, part of that might have been because he was getting ganked by their Shaco player a lot I mean their Shaco player never came up and did anything to me but he was in mid harming Donsky a lot but late in the game though Donsky really did a nice job you saw him hit the two great ash arrows both times on the gangplank so he definitely got his revenge there and was more useful in the team fighting phase. Serun, if anyone is the MVP of this game, it was Serun. He was everywhere on the map. He, he was 11 14 before that death right at the very end. So, so tanky, hard to kill. He set up almost every kill that we got. So, Serun, I know that you sometimes get down on your jungling skills, but this was just a brilliant game. So, really well done. Just totally controlled the totally controlled the jungle and completely outplayed that enemy the enemy team Shaco jungler, who just wasn't all that effective. Mookie, very nice and bundling. You can see Mookie had the most kills on our team. Also had a lot of deaths, but but was doing a lot of damage with, with the Rise build. Rise really strong in the current version of the game. Cole, a great assist, some really nice Sona ult at times. I'm not sure why the seven deaths, though. I feel like playing as Sona, if you can just stay in the back, you sh shouldn't really die that much. Uh, almost as many deaths as everybody else in the team put together. So a little 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 strange about that, but other than that, very well played. And uh, I've played Sona. I have a number of different Sona builds, but none of my Sona builds involve a Heart of Gold and two Cages Lucky Picks. So I'm not really sure what's going on there, but, but uh, very very nice Sona ult at times. Anyway, I wanted to show this game because I wanted to highlight that Annie versus Mordekaiser matchup. Mordekaiser has tormented me in the past so, so badly. He's a very tough champ champion to lane against. So, especially for casters, for, for ability power casters, it's really tough to lane against Mordekaiser, particularly in the early game. So, I wanted to put up this video to showcase that. 
I wanted to show some ways to try to deal with that. You've got to play defensively early on. You really need to get some help from your jungler on your team because what Mordecai is just going to do, he's a lot like Heimerdinger. He, he reminds me of that champion as well. He's going to push the lane. Like he's going to push and he's going to be exposed for a jungler gank or, or from someone, the other solo to come up or come down and help you out. But he's going to be very exposed to that. So that's that's how you have to take advantage of Mordecai. And if you can do that, as you saw in this game, then you can really shut him down. I mean, notice that even though Mordecai had all the minion kills, 240. I mean, he was almost totally useless late game. He just didn't really add very much to their team. So kudos to my teammates for helping me out. I mean, I, I couldn't win that lane alone. I needed help from my teammates, but they did so. And you saw as the game went on, I just got stronger and stronger and stronger. The, those early kills from the ganks just helped put me back in the lane and then put me ahead to the point where I could start laning against that Mordekaiser. Uh, and as I said, the shield does get weaker as the game goes on. Anyway, so this is getting really long, so I'm going to wrap it up here. Again, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening. And this was my 200th win in normal. So 200 wins, 132 losses. Uh, feels like that's pretty good. I uh, don't want to toot my own horn, but I think that's pretty good. So again, thanks for watching the channel. Uh, I do read the comments. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Until I put up the next video, take care, guys. I'll see you soon.